One of the cool things about being back for We Are Weekend is interacting with folks from different classes, from different walks of life, from different generations. And it's just awesome to hear their stories as far as their experiences when they were here on campus. I had a chance to actually go and, and tour Beaver Stadium. I had a chance to go to WPSU and see how they go about their daily activities to get folks involved in their, in their operations. Penn State is really a pivotal place for, for both my wife and I. We met here. Um, I feel like I grew up at Penn State. Uh, it just broadened my horizons, both academically and also as a person. And being involved with different activities on campus really molded me into the person that I am today. We have uh, five kids. So for us, uh, trying to get away and do something just the two of us is, is really tough. So it's really great that we can have our kids with us and participate. They've had a great time participating in the different tours and activities, enjoying some of the food. And uh, having them here as part of our family has really been able to allow us to enjoy the weekend, not just my wife and I, but our entire family together. Being a pioneer is, is really special because it was, it was like getting an award and the award was just for being 50 years a graduate. But uh, actually tonight I get to put the medals on some of the new pioneers and it's passing the, the, the torch. And that's very special and we, we our weekend allows me to do that for them and hopefully they'll get enough out of We Are Weekend that they'll come back and, and do the same thing in the future years. We thought it'd be really cool to bring alumni tour guides back to give tours with current students and really get that alumni and also current student perspective to be able to share all of our stories. And for us on the tours, it's been really fun because we're also hearing stories from other Penn State alumni. Even if they weren't tour guides, they have their own sort of understanding of campus and little stories from different areas. So for me, it's been just so great, that synergy of sort of stories and everyone sort of having their love for Penn State and being able to share that. For me, coming back to Penn State is so much about uh, reliving old traditions, but also creating new ones. And I really thought coming back for We Are Weekend would be a great opportunity to start a new tradition at Penn State. We are. Hello, welcome everybody. We're so delighted to have you. Um, you are seeing the lovely faces of the C Network board. And I will start off with uh, introducing John Doughty Berry. She is the star of the show for today. She's gonna feed our bellies by showing us how to make amazing Penn State affiliated dishes inspired by Louisiana cuisine. And uh, my name is Nuria Diallo Padro. I'm a two-time alum uh, from the College of Education. So I'm really delighted to be able to participate in the We Are Weekend because I'm also an alumni council uh, board member. And so it is a two for one for me to be here with you today. I will let the lovely ladies introduce themselves as we go along and they will share nuggets of wisdom and tasty recipes along the way. John? Okay. Hi, Penn State family. Welcome and welcome to my kitchen, which is really now become the C Network Kitchen. So today we're going to do a couple of really good desserts. And the C Network wants to get all of you prepared for just a good weeknight dessert or something you can take to a tailgate. But come join us today because we're really excited to show you a couple of really good treats. So I'm originally from New Orleans. I came to Penn State in the early 90s, straight from New Orleans and brought my culture with me. Just like all of my good C Network friends, we are a diverse and multifaceted group. So today we're going to make three desserts. And for those of you who have registered, you already know what these are, but I'll tell you what we'll do. So we're gonna kind of start almost like we're going to breakfast in New Orleans with what I call my stately beignet. So our beignets are French uh, dessert, uh, kind of like a donut, and we typically have them now in New Orleans, we eat them 24 seven, but they're perfect for breakfast. So we'll start with those. And next we'll move into what I call kind of a lunch dessert, but again, we eat them all day long. And it's our sticky alumni bread pudding. 
that we are uh, taking a little bit of a trip to our good old days as Penn Staters, where we would go to Yale College Diner after a kind of tough class day and get a grilled sticky. We're gonna bring those grilled stickies to you today. And then we'll end with a somewhat fancy dessert, but that you'll be able to make at home which uh, is what I call our Peachy Pauline Bananas Foster. So let's get started because we got a lot to do. So we're going to start, as I said, with breakfast, which is our uh, really great stately beignets. Now, if you're in New Orleans, you know that you go to the French Quarter and you would get these and uh, go down in the French Quarter, Stay in a nice long line, and or really at any great beignet restaurant, they will have these. Now, I decided if we're going to do them for home, like I said, we're doing these for a weeknight. I'm a mom as well, so I like to find things that are really great that I can make with my kids at home. So my Penn State friends, these are actually refrigerated biscuit dough. That's right. So I have these out, they're room temperature so that they can rise a little bit. And let me show you. Now, I like to get the kind that's buttermilk. Don't get the flaky ones or those, get the, one that's, the ones that say buttermilk. And of course, when you get them out the can, they look like this, right, the little square. Now, we don't want you frying these this way because then your friends are gonna go, oh gee, she fried me a biscuit. So that's not what we want. Now in New Orleans, these are shaped in a square-like fashion. So I would say to you, just try your best to manipulate it as best as you can. As long as it's not in the shape of a biscuit, I think we've won. So I just take these and kind of just mold them just a little bit. Don't manipulate them too, too much, but just do a little bit of a shape that's kind of resemblant of a square, if you will. So I'll just do a couple of these and show you. Now, beignets are great. Uh, when, one of the first things I did when I came to Penn State as a graduate student in the 90s is have some of my friends over. And when we were studying after a long night in, in paternal library, uh, you want something a little sweet. So these just kind of worked. I had. Uh, biscuits in my refrigerator and whip these up and it worked as a really great uh, kind of dessert, especially if you're a current college student with not a lot of money. Okay, so we'll take these, stretch them out a little bit. And one of the things is this is, I have a 12 skillet, 12 inch skillet uh, heating right now. And in here is canola oil. I love using canola oil for things like this because it really, really helps. It, it takes high heat and uh, it doesn't have a taste because again, we don't want these to taste oily and greasy. We want all of the really good things that I'm gonna show you to really stick. Okay, so let's start. So I'm gonna just put these in. I was testing a little bit the oil. You kind of, I don't know if you saw my magic there, just drop a little bit of dough to make sure it kind of bubbles a little bit. So I'm seeing a little bit of bubbling. I'm gonna turn up my heat just a little bit. I don't want it too, too high because these can actually brown pretty quickly. We don't want that. Because these are buttermilk and they are a little thick, uh, they can easily brown on the outside and uh, the inside will be kind of a doughy, which is not what we want. Uh, we wanna make sure that those are actually cooking all the way through. So I'm gonna put these on. I'm gonna use my tongs to kind of for a safety measure here. And you don't want them too close together. You want them a little bit apart because you want them to, to just breathe a little bit. So I'll do one serving here so you can see uh, what this looks like. And beignets are great. They're French dessert, came really to Louisiana as far back as the 1800s. Uh, what 
was interesting about them is when they first came over and were, and were really introduced to Louisiana, they kind of have fruit in the inside. I haven't really seen any with fruit, uh, but we've done a couple of different versions of this. I actually like to sprinkle a little bit of cinnamon sometimes on mine, cinnamon sugar, and have that on them. If you go some places, they'll do chocolate beignets. So you can kind of twist this to the way that you like. Okay, so our beignets friends are getting a little brown. You kind of know when it's time to flip them over when you start seeing a little bit of browning. So I'm flipping. You'll see here, see that little browning right there? That's kind of what we want. Okay. Because we have that nice big buttermilk dough, uh, we want to make sure that it's actually cooked all the way through for us. Now, if you're going to bring these, let's say for a tailgate, because we're, we're going to win this year, guys. So one of the things that we want to do is you can actually bring these and I'll show you how to package it in a minute, but they're perfect, a perfect dessert for you to bring to a tailgate, to a potluck, uh, because you can actually make these ahead of time, store them, and then I'll show you how to plate it when you get to uh, you know, right outside Beaver Stadium or when you get to your friend's house. Okay, so while these are finishing, I'm going to turn it over to Mia, who's going to share a little bit with you um, about uh, the C Network. Over to you, Mia. Thanks, Sean. Welcome, everyone. Uh, my name is Mia Hines, and I am the vice president of the C Network. Um, I graduated from the College of Education in 2004 with a BS in Rehabilitation Services. Uh, I worked as a high school counselor for a while and now I'm an academic advisor uh, for teacher prep programs. Um, so we want to tell you a little bit about the inspiration behind the C Network. So all of us on the board, we were all students of color that obviously graduated from the College of Ed. Um, but outside of supports um, that Maria Schmidt, um, our lovely advisor, offered us, we often found ourselves um, within spaces and classrooms that, you know, um, we were one of only. So we went outside of the college a lot to find that sense of community at Penn State. Um, so what we wanted to do with the C Network is we wanted to be a place where current students of color and alumni uh, can network, they can be mentored, um, and ultimately um, build a sense of community for educators of color in the field where, you know, there's not a lot of um, educators of color. So we are vastly underrepresented. Um, and we also want to make sure that we're supporting the the efforts of the Office of Education and Social Equity. Um, so really, and you'll learn a little bit more about some of the programs that we have coming up later on in the segment. So that is about the C Network. Um, and also, you know, we, since we're on the subject of cooking, um, wanted to share one of my um, family recipes that, you know, I, it is my go-to. Um, so it's candied yams. Um, we just call it yams really, um, or sweet potatoes, whatever you wanna call it. Um, so my dad grew up in the South and um, he made candy yams all the time. They were like the best. Every, all friends and family would always ask if your dad is making those candy yams for a holiday, I'm there, can you bring me a plate? Um, and my dad, he pretty much eats candy yams for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You know, that's how he was raised. <laughs> um, and so as an adult, I got the recipe and it is just a staple in my house and it never stays. Um, so I really enjoy making those. Okay, thanks, Mia. All right, friends. So what I did was I took these out. Uh, again, we have that, that nice browning on the top. We actually want them brown. In New Orleans, they're a little even sometimes darker than this. So we want them a little brown. I put them on a nice cooling rack. 
So even though we used our tongs to kind of take those out and put them on, this just allows a little bit of that excess grease to kind of fall. Now, let me show you how we're gonna plate them. So you can use a brown paper bag if you want, or I have this container. So uh, if we're going to make these in advance, you have your, your now beignet, and uh, you can put that in a container and cool it. And in here is a mound of powdered sugar. So I forgot to give you a wonderful disclaimer that if you're trying to watch your calories or count calories, this is probably not the show for you. Uh, but so here is powdered sugar. And remember, these are stately beignets, right? So in here, I just sprinkled some wonderful blue sprinkles so that you have blue and white, uh, uh, nice powdered sugar here. Now we want these, my friends, nice and hot because they will adhere to the powdered sugar really, really well uh, that way. So I'm gonna take them, I'll show you really quickly. So just putting these two in for you so you can see. And just shake. Dear old state, dear old state. See, shake, shake, shake. Now, I've got to tell you this part I forgot. If you don't have powdered sugar on your body when you are eating beignets or cooking them, you're not doing it right. Something's wrong. <laughs> so I knew this would happen. So that's why I wore blue, guys. So you can see the blue and white. See, keeping the theme going. Keeping the theme going. Okay, so I'm shaking. So all you do is take them out and just plate. So we have our nice little we are weak plate here. And Take your beignet. As I said, in New Orleans, they're typically uh, served as two, but these are really pretty thick uh, with it being the, the biscuit dough. So it, it kind of works. And what we're wanting, which is so good, the, the buttermilk with these makes these so nice and fluffy and moist. That's why we want the buttermilk because it'll give you that nice, a moist, fluffy flavor. Uh, you can taste the buttermilk here and that crunch, just like we have in beignets in New Orleans, that nice crunch, people will talk to you about that. And you can't see it, but it's cooked all the way through. So to make sure that they are cooked all the way through. We want roughly about four minutes uh, per side on each one of those. So I'm gonna move this over. And while I'm transitioning for this, I'll check with Krishana, make sure we see if we have any questions yet. Yes, Jean, one question came in and someone was wondering how hot do you want your pan? They're thinking about 350. What do you think? I would say 350. I try and keep it around 350. Uh, not too, too hot. Really adjust it though. Like look at it. Let your beignet kind of dictate it a little bit for you because it will tell you if your pan is a little too hot, to be honest because if they start to get just too brown too quickly, that means your, your oil is a little too hot, my friends. So just turn it down a bit. That's a great question. Um, so the next thing we wanna do is I want to turn on my oven. So we're going to make, as I told you, our sticky alumni bread pudding with that awesome, awesome, awesome grilled sticky uh, from Yale College Diner. But while we're making that, friends, I want to get started on these. 
So I bought some already chopped pecans. You don't have to buy them this way. Uh, you can get the whole pecans and dice them up. But remember, I'm a working mom. If I can cut out any kind of cook prep by, by doing so, I do. So I bought these already chopped. And then what I did was just coated them in a little bit of olive oil because I want them kind of crunchy. And we're gonna use these for our peachy praline bananas foster in a minute. So I'm gonna pop these in the oven. Now we're not gonna use all of these. I'm going to just put a couple because I want it for texture. I'm gonna save the rest of these though because I need a really good snack for the rest of the events for We Are Week, uh, we are week that's happening later this week. So I need a good snack. So I'm gonna cover the rest of these and some good cinnamon sugar. But for now, let's put these in the oven. And I also have my oven going too because uh, I will need it in a minute for my sticky alumni bread pudding. So I was really happy that Good old Berkery Creamery actually ships. So for those of you who were able to get the ingredients in advance, a uh, big shout out to Berkery Creamery for being able to do that. So Yale College Diner. So you'll get the grilled stickies. They'll look and come just like this. Now you will see that there really aren't it's not that that big once you get one of these boxes, right? But boy, do they pack a lot of flavor. So they'll come just like this. And what I did was I took mine and cut them in one inch cubes. So I'll show you in a second. And you can do just like I'm doing. If you know that you have a long work day. You want to uh, know you want to have a, a, a somewhat nice or a, a little dessert. You can actually cut these up, store them, and they'll store. And just put them aside and use later. So I cut these up, my friends, in one inch cubes. So I want them for the bread pudding uh, to, I want to be able to A, detect that I'm eating a growth sticky because if you cut them too fine or too small, it's actually almost unrecognizable. But this allows you to, to kind of be able to just get a little bit of bite. The other good thing about the growth sticky is that it already has some of the main ingredients that you would put in a bread pudding anyway. So we use cinnamon, we use sugar, uh, we also use uh, kind of day-old bread. Uh, typically in New Orleans, it's good old French bread, but you can really use uh, really any kind of bread. But it gives you, uh, because they're already kind of baked in here, you already have a pretty thick bread that they use, which is great, so it mimics a, a French bread uh, pretty, pretty well. And it's already heavily coated in cinnamon and sugar, which is yum. Uh, so we have that. So let's get started with this one. And so I have here two eggs, uh, some golden raisins, and I like to transfer when I'm using anything with milk to a, a container like this because it allows me to control the amount of milk that I'm pouring in. Uh, I've had quite a few mishaps with pouring it right out the gallon and I've had way too much milk. That's another story. So here are my two eggs. I'm just gonna lightly uh, whip these. Uh, it helps to really lighten up because we're going to make uh, kind of like a custard for our bread pudding and just blend that a bit. Um, 
bread pudding is one of my favorites. My grandmother uh, used to make bread pudding. Now she would use a sweetened condensed milk. I'm using today, um, this is, you can use whole milk if you want. This is a 2% milk. Um, I've even made this recently with oat milk. And so if you're trying to watch your dairy, you could actually try it with oat milk. I've also used French vanilla coffee creamer. I kid you not. <laughs> so I've tried that. And I've also, um, oh, gee, I'm drawing a blank. Oh, just uh, fat-free milk. I'll be honest with you and tell you that fat-free milk didn't come out as nicely, but this does. Okay, so we have our, our two whipped eggs. Again, we just whipped them just a little bit here. Uh, this is about a cup and a half of milk, in case you're wondering. Um, another type of milk that you could use, I'm gonna just do maybe, this is about a cup that I just poured in. Uh, you can also use light cream or uh, half and half uh, as, as well. Okay, so I'm putting my grilled stickies in my bowl here. Um, and they're just going to, what we're looking for is just absorbing all of that, that nice cream and liquid in there. This is, again, just a great uh, recipe. If you're also too trying to not waste bread, we all have uh, sometimes just bread lying around and you don't want to throw it away. Uh, we're big uh, about not wasting uh, things and finding really good ways to reuse things that, that we already have. So as you can see here, we've got our, our grilled stickies in, but what we want, friends, is for that custard to really kind of cover this. And right now it's not covering it as much as I would like. So I am going to introduce a little bit more of, of the milk here. John, quick question. Sure. Um, our audience, what should the oven temperature be? So I just set the, the oven to 350. Awesome. So we're, and you're going to keep that same uh, temperature. If you've noticed, I like the number 350 because it's hard for me to remember these things. So skillet, 350, my friends, oven, 350. Perfect. Um, and you're welcome. And that, that goes also for your uh, roasted pecans and for this bread pudding. It works both ways. Thank you. No, you're welcome. Guys, yeah, just keep asking away. So next... I'm going to put in our raisins. So uh, I like to use golden raisins. Uh, they're not as sweet. Uh, and remember, we have grilled stickies and cinnamon and sugar. We got a lot happening here. So I, I like to use golden raisins. They're a little more uh, tart and they're juicier and they don't have that like grainy uh, kind of texture and feel that you sometimes get from regular raisins. Now, if you're over there going, ew, the first time I introduced raisins, uh, then don't worry. You don't have to put the raisins in. But remember that we have something that's pretty sweet. So we want to make sure we're balancing it. If you've ever had a dish and it's too like, uh, it's too, too hot, uh, it's too spicy, or it's too sweet or too sour. Uh, they weren't thinking about the sweet to sour, hot to mild ratio. So we want to make sure that we're actually doing that when we're cooking and we're kind of balancing it out. Okay, so I'm just dumped the raisins in uh, and we're going to mix those in here, get them pretty, pretty nicely incorporated. 
And I also, friends, want to, uh, I liked to see flecks of cinnamon in uh, different things that I'm cooking. So while this has some cinnamon, as I told you, because it's already on the bread, I want to introduce just a little bit more. So I have here a half a teaspoon of uh, a blend of cinnamon and sugar. Uh, I like to also do a little bit of vanilla. So I'm just gonna sprinkle that on top, mix that in a little bit. I've also done this where I even have just a little bit sometimes of spice as well. And I will spice it up and put uh, a little bit of chipotle uh, cinnamon as well. Uh, so, oh, wow, friends, look at that. So it's really incorporating really, really nicely. Uh, and I'm so happy. Okay, so we have our pan. It's been oiled and buttered. So just pour that in. And this should make for you pretty much enough of a serving for, I'd say about maybe five people, six. And I'll show you uh, later on how to plate that. But we're just gonna put it in, in our 350 degree oven. We're going to do about 30 minutes, 30, 35 minutes at 350. What we want is for this to get uh, kind of nice and brown, a little bit of fluffy. You can pull it out. I like to do things in 15 minute increments. So I'll kind of check it a little bit at, at the 15 minute mark. Just do the good old finger uh, print test, a uh, finger push test, which is once it doesn't uh, give back, that's when I know it's kind of ready. So I'll put this in. One of my favorite uh, things to make is a really great um, bread pudding that also has white chocolate in it. So you can make a white chocolate uh, bread pudding also, which is fabulous. So if you're doing a white chocolate version, all you'll do is remember when I, I mixed in the raisins, you will fold in uh, white chocolate pieces. And you can do that with uh, just a bar of white chocolate, uh, sometimes some folks will get uh, like the, the baking white chocolate. I'm the kind of person that likes to incorporate things that I would actually eat if it wasn't for me baking it. So I'm not a huge fan of the baking white chocolate. Some people like it because it stands up uh, a, a little bit better to all of those things, but it, it kind of works really, really nicely. The other thing uh, for the bread pudding is it's, it was a really, really great thing to, to uh, like I said, bring to a tailgate as well. You can actually make your bread pudding, put it in the refrigerator, and then bring it with you the next day or you know, even like two days later, which, which is really, really great. John, I think a lot of people are loving this recipe and are excited about all that they're going to make for their future tailgate. So we have a bunch of questions. Okay, let's go. Yes, I'm one ready. of our wonderings is how much milk did you put in in the first part? Okay, so I used friends about a cup of milk. Uh, you can adjust it. Uh, you want those growth stickies covered, like I told you. Now, you don't want them uh, too soupy, if, that, if that's such a word. Uh, but you do want it, uh, you know, nicely covered. So just adjust it. That's why I said I put it in 
kind of a container. I take it out of the gallon uh, just so I can regulate it a little bit better. So uh, definitely adjust it that way. Awesome. And thinking about that, how many stickies did you use um, for your like cup measurement when you put them in? Mm -hmm. Great question. So since uh, I'm having just you guys over today for, for lunch and dessert, I only used one box. Uh, you can use more than one box. Uh, like I told you, you don't get that, uh, that big of a portion size uh, in there. But what I do like is that you do have a, a nice, it's so dense as a bread that they use that it, it does still work. So just, I would say, uh, just you start with one box and see how much that yields. And then if not, just do two. Perfect. Okay. Another question was somebody is ready to have a good time with this recipe and they want to know, can you put bourbon in this? And if so, when should you do that? Okay. Whoever that is, I love you. Uh, so the, the answer, to, I love all of you, but work with me. So yes, uh, you can put bourbon in. Um, I will tell you some of the main ways that bourbon or any kind of alcohol is introduced is actually in the sauce uh, that, that we use. So you will frequently find a bread pudding with a rum sauce or a bourbon sauce. Um, I've seen whiskey as well. So you can actually use uh, and, and infuse alcohol that way. Awesome, awesome. And then the recipe had three or four eggs, but since we used two and some milk, do you think that that's enough? That's enough. Perfect. So you can, uh, you can modify it. Now, if you want, that's a great question. If you want a more, I would say custardy uh, type of bread pudding, this one you're, you'll see is going to most likely come out kind of firm when I when I pull it uh, when I pull it out and show you. But if you want one that's a little lighter, fluffier, you would use more A because it'll it'll give a, a little bit of a lighter kind of feel to it. Thank you. And then I have one last question from sure. the crowd. We want to know how much sugar and raisins. Oh, okay, great question. So I used two thirds cup of, um, of sugar. You mean for the, for the bread pudding, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. So about two thirds cup of sugar. Um, and then for raisins, that's a cup of raisins. And all of these, the, the full recipe, you'll actually get after we are weekend. So you'll get to see and, and tweak it and modify it uh, as well. But again, watch it. If you're not using grilled stickies and you have, uh, you know, you're looking for another type of bread that you can use, uh, I have used uh, also just cinnamon raisin bread as well. Remember, I like to double on get things that will uh, double in terms of uh, type of ingredient. So you can use the cinnamon raisin bread, of course. If you're like many of the grocery stores here, I'm based in uh, New Jersey right now. Uh, we frequently go into the grocery store and you'll see the French baguettes right at the front door or right at the, the entrance to your bakery. Grab that 99 cents French baguette and use it to make your bread pudding. Uh, so you can do that as well. Uh, you can also, friends, get a, the, I, showed you the biscuits in the can, get the cinnamon roll one. Uh, so you can actually get the cinnamon roll refrigerated dough and use that as well. Bake it like you would normal cinnamon rolls and then pull apart those to use as your bread for your bread pudding. So you have a lot of uh, variations there. That, that Thank you, you. You're welcome, you're welcome. 
Okay, so we have now transitioned, my friends, to a 10-inch skillet. When a little bit smaller, we used a 12-inch one before because we really wanted more surface area for those beignets to kind of spread apart, rise a bit. Now we're using a 10-inch one. Now we're going to do our Peachy Pauline Alumni Bananas Foster. Now, if you're in New Orleans, this is a dessert that if you're celebrating something or uh, you want to have a really nice uh, kind of romantic dinner or uh, just celebrating the fact that you earned your Penn State degree and you now have a job, uh, you would certainly want to uh, have Bananas Foster. It is going to most likely be the, the really great dessert that you'll have at the end. So we'll start with good old butter. Now, uh, this is about four tablespoons of butter. I'm using today unsalted butter, but you can certainly use salted butter. I'm, I'm trying to, uh, in this particular instance, I want to control and modify the amount of salt that, that is being used. So I'm watching that. So I put the butter in and this is a dessert that actually cooks quickly. This is a uh, two thirds cup of dark brown sugar. So I fold in the dark brown sugar into the butter mixture. And what we're looking for, kind of that nice, Kind of caramelization that you'll get from just mixing the butter and the sugar. Um, this is something, like I said, you you have a fancy uh, event or something you're you're celebrating. You'll see bananas foster on the menu. Uh, if you go to a New Orleans restaurant, these are typically made for you tableside uh, as well. So go to a restaurant uh, when you go to my hometown and ask for Bananas Foster. But we're bringing this journey home to you today so you can actually make it uh, right at home. So all you're doing is really incorporating the sugar and the butter. If you do want uh, a, a little bit of salt, some people actually like the salt that comes from the salted butter because it cuts a little bit of that, that uh, kind of rich sweetness that you get from the, the molasses and, and the brown sugar. So you can put that in. Now, I want to tell you for my friends that want to adult this up a little bit. Now, I, I'm showing you, you see that kind of gold and that real amber kind of color? That's what we want. We want that butter kind of fully incorporated and see how it's sliding. You don't want it sticky. So you know that you kind of overcooked this when you, you do the little Jean, you can sit in your kitchen and do this. <laughs> and if you see the sticking, uh, then you know that you kind of overcooked it. So I'm, I'm looking for you all to turn when you're doing this, okay? So if this is actually moving, then you know you've done a good job. Now, let's say you want to adult it up. You can actually add, at this point, banana liqueur. Uh, now, some people will use about a good tablespoon of banana liqueur. I've talked to other folks who douse a little bit more, but it will help to bring out a little bit of the banana flavor that we're about to do in a minute. So here's some bananas. This is actually in my dish here, just one large banana. I try to uh, use bananas that are uh, just maybe a little bit under ripened uh, so that they have a little more snapback as they say, a little bit crisp, a little bit more crisp, because they are 
uh, needing to hold up to all of this rich sugar and, and molasses that, that we're, we're putting in here. So we're going to mix this. Now, I will also tell you that one of the things that I do is uh, you can also sometimes take this off the heat if you want uh, and, and not have the heat in. And if you also want to kind of liven up a little bit some of the maybe uh, vanilla notes and give another note to this, you can put in just a, a teaspoon of vanilla extract. Uh, it'll bring out uh, actually a little bit of not only the, the kind of brown sugar uh, feel, but it actually, for me in some ways, kind of elevates the, the banana a little bit. So we're just gonna incorporate this. Now, let's go back to our tailgate idea. So if we're bringing this to a tailgate, the way that we would do it that way is right before it's time to add those bananas. We would actually take this off. You can find a container like this uh, at any craft store or even your grocery store. Um, you can pour the mixture in here, bring this and your container of bananas or just a whole banana and bring that to the tailgate. It actually holds up pretty, pretty well. Uh, this will actually stay pretty nicely in your refrigerator for about two days. I've, I've even stretched it to, uh, to three days. Okay, so we'll take this. Now let me show you how we'll plate it. So I have here, this is actually a margarita glass, my friends. Uh, but it actually doubles really nicely uh, for those times, especially during COVID, where we weren't really going out very much, but I kind of missed going out a lot. I was trying to find ways to kind of jazzy up my, my dinners, and I missed home. So this allowed me to kind of do that. So my way of getting there was to actually... Uh, get fancier things and, and kind of scoop it up. So thanks to the Berkeley Creamery, I have Peachy Paterno ice cream. So you can also get this delivered to your home as well. And here's how we will do this. Uh, Peachy Paterno is my mom's favorite. So I, I always uh, get this as a, or whenever I get peachy Protono, I think about mom. So hats off to you, mom. Uh, so you could scoop, but my favorite is alumni swirl. I love alumni swirl. <laughs> okay, so just scoop about two here. Now in New Orleans, we use vanilla ice cream. Uh, vanilla allows you to really be able to fully taste the, the sugar and uh, the caramel and all of the different uh, yummy kind of flavors there. Okay, so just take your bananas foster. And I have my son, who is a really great taste tester, and my daughter, who will taste test this for us. Uh, Jaden? So this is, uh, and we have the sugar, the cinnamon. Tell me what you think. All right. Say hi to the people. Hey. <laughs> Come on in. All right, taste it. Tell me what you think. Julia, you're up. Right? 
do you taste the the, the cinnamon and, and the brown sugar and the molasses? You bet. Okay. Sounds good. Sounds good? All flavor. Yep. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Sounds good. So pass taste test one. Okay, Julia, you're up next. Okay, so here we'll get for Julia. So you get to have those bananas. Now, let me tell you how long we want to cook it. So we want to kind of get a little bit of the, the banana so that it's a little soft uh, as well. Um, Mm, I got a mm, so I guess that works. That's good. That's good. Okay, great. So thank you, sweetheart. That's the official teenager language. Mm. That's the official teenager language, yes. Um, so friends, we want to cook those bananas just enough so that they're a little soft as well. And then uh, you can put them in. But definitely will hold up for those things. Now, I have to tell you, I wouldn't be a good New Orleanian if I didn't tell you how we do this back at home. So right uh, before uh, we're actually putting the bananas and everything in, you will see uh, the great folks in New Orleans at the restaurants will actually take this off uh, the, the stove and they will light it uh, as well. Uh, now, what's cool is that uh, at that point is when we put rum in. So for all of my good friends who asked about alcohol earlier, so we actually put rum in and uh, it's really cool if I, I didn't want to do that because I don't want you all coming after the seed network for insurance bills and stuff that you blew up your house. So we're just getting started, guys, <laughs> but you can take this off. And you can put some uh, rum in as well and, and, and light it. And if you really want a little uh, fire or pizzazz, sprinkle a little bit of cinnamon in it. And the cinnamon will really make it kind of blow up a little bit, uh, give a nice presentation. So those are all of our dishes. Let me show you really quickly how to plate our bread pudding. Krishana, any questions while I'm doing the bread pudding? One quick question. So thinking about the pecans, when would you do those? Yes. So we would drop the pecans in right uh, when we're doing the banana and just fold that in. You can also put the, the pecans right on top as well. So I, either way. And remember, we're going to save the rest of those uh, for when, when we're all done. Okay, so it's time to plate our bread pudding. So one of the things that's a little trick that I like to do is I will get just a regular glass that I have at home. This is the bowl that I wanna use. And I will take the, a glass, this is our bread pudding. Again, we'll see it with the nice kind of See how my, my finger's just bouncing right back, guys. That's what we want, right? Cup. Push. Turn. Serving. Ta-da! This way, it helps me if I'm bringing this to a tailgate, to a company party, to a cookout, I can actually, in my head, calculate the, the number of people that will consume it because I'll start counting circles. And what uh, for presentation, you can actually take these and kind of stack them a little bit. And then that way people get enough of it uh, and you don't have, you're not sitting at the cookout or the tailgate going, I can't believe everybody ate all my bread pudding because people will eat all of your bread pudding because this is that good. <laughs> so you don't want to sit there going, I'm out of bread pudding already. Uh, this will actually help you kind of control those portions. And our leftover uh, bananas foster, that nice, warm, uh, lovely, uh, dark brown sugar and bananas, 
you can actually take that and pour it on top of here. So it can double as your sauce as well. So you have that and you can use it for the bananas foster and as your topping for your uh, bread pudding. Okay, so those are our three dishes. Um, I hope, really, really hope that you will use and make any of these at home. They're so easy and quick and won't take a lot of time to make. And it's a little something different. These are things that you can find at your grocery store and that you can make. If you're, you're like me, I, you know, I'm a mom of two kids and I have a puppy who you can't see <laughs> who's roaming all around. So I like things that are things that I can make pretty quickly and easily. But if you don't have time because of a global pandemic or just time uh, to go out to a restaurant, bring the restaurant home to, to you and to your family and to your friends and do something a little different. Uh, especially for the C Network, we're such a diverse group and we wanted to bring a little bit of our cultures to you. So I wanna thank you on behalf of the C Network for allowing me to bring a little bit of New Orleans to you. So thank you guys. Thank you, John. And I believe we have Jessica now who's gonna share a little bit of information. Of course. So John, that was super hard to follow. Um, thank you so much. That was uh, an amazing show. Um, so my name is Jessica Powell. I am a Penn State College of Education grad from 2007. Um, I studied elementary education. I currently live in the Bronx um, and I work for the City University of New York as an academic advisor. Uh, so I am the mentoring chair um, in the C Network. And uh, we're trying to put some programming together to really focus on all students, you know, specifically within the College of Ed uh, to build capacity and to also connect with all students, whether it's past students, present students, and also future students. Uh, we hope to really partake in recruitment and retention uh, of um, people, or the POP community, students who are interested in coming to Penn State we really want to provide support services and mentoring um, and opportunities. And so we hope that you will join, um, you will follow us through all of our social media networks that are growing um, very fastly, thanks to Krishana. Um, thank you so much for putting all this together. And um, you know, something that we ask of you, in addition to following, we're gonna have some polling just to see what kind of services that you're interested in receiving or services you wish you had when you were a student. Um, and that information will definitely be um, indispensable, you know, as we you know, continue our journey, journey as, in the, as the C network. So we appreciate all of you coming and thank you so much. Great, thank you everybody. Um, I did actually share that I'm the programming chair for the C Network and uh, with uh, Jessica actually took the time with her daughter to make some great uh, cooking recipes. Uh, you can find them on our uh, social media as well. So when you join, you can learn how to make some French toast since we're you know kind of keeping that theme going. And um, I would say for me, because I'm Puerto Rican, you know, I definitely would have to bring some uh, Puerto Rican flavor to the mix and uh, I do a Puerto Rican turkey for Thanksgiving and people go well what's a Puerto Rican turkey and when you go to open the oven it goes whip that's how you know you made it right um, but at any rate we actually put some really cool uh, ingredients into our stuffing and so when you come to check out our uh, cookbook that we're going to be uh, you know launching this fall uh, with uh, our College of Ed alum, then you can definitely see what's in that recipe, as well as all these other wonderful recipes that our uh, board and alumni will be sharing. So we look forward to definitely hearing from all of you. We'd love to see pictures that you've made when you try to, uh, you know, make some of these different recipes that Jean shared today. And we look forward to just staying connected. So thank you so much for all your time. Any last words, anybody? I just want to say, you know, thanks again to all of you, to our amazing board, 
and to the College of Education. Uh, you know, we, we're all College of Education grads and uh, we just love the college. So we hope that you all will all enjoy uh, we are weekend, uh, as my sign right behind me says, uh, Penn State had me at We Are. So we want to thank all of you for, for joining us today. And thank you to uh, the amazing C Network family for all being here today. So thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank Have a great you. day. We are. We Penn are. State. <laughs> Bye. 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 Did you call me? Mm -mm.